Welcome to Julie Lawton Living, featuring engaging conversations on creating the life, business, and luxury home of your dreams. With over 30 years of experience in the design build industry, Julie has completed over 1,000 remodels and custom homes in Southern California and provides architecture, design, engineering, and general contracting as a unique one stop shop for her clients. Let's join the conversation with our host, Julie Lawton. Welcome back, everyone. It's Julie Lawton. Thank you so much for listening to my podcast at julielawtonliving.com. Today, the topic is how I manage men and what's my secret to manage them, managing them. And um, I just wanted to let everyone know that I'm here with David again. And David is my behind the scenes guy who helps me do all this technically, if you're wondering, because you know I'm busy and um, David produces everything for me, but it is me who writes all the blogs, writes all the questions, writes all the content, and I'm sharing my life with you and how I do all this. So I just wanted to thank David again for being a part of this, and then we're going to kick off the show with the with the topic we're talking about. Yeah, well, it's great to be with you again, Julie. Thank you very much. All right. So obviously managing a team of men in a traditionally male dominated industry can present quite a few unique challenges. How do you approach leading your team at Julie Lawton Design Build? Well, since I'm the boss and I actually, you know, write their checks, there's a different approach to how they feel about me. But as a person, as a manager, because I'm the manager and I'm also the boss, because, you know, some people are a manager and they're not writing the check. So it's management is the clear communication and you must know what you're talking about and actually be in charge of the situation, meaning you have to give clear direction. And then the secret is seriously, just like with my clients, I listen and make sure they understand the direction. So you take an extra step and listen, watch and follow up because every one of these men listens differently and works a little differently and so i'm kind of careful about following up and did you understand that because you can't just go around and yell at people because they didn't get it right the first time because hey maybe there was a language barrier hey maybe they don't they listen different and they need you to show them how to do it so we take extra steps by showing them how to do the carpentry and showing them how to do the work and actually, I've gotten the shovel out and shown them how I want this done. You know, I've done things physically and I I'm, I take extra steps to training and and explaining. And there's no dumb questions. So I don't make pe- people feel scared of me or scared that they can't ask. So that's how I do it. I'm I'm pretty interactive as a manager and everybody should be that way. You can't just bark orders and leave. You know, you got to train and explain and listen. One of the things you just mentioned that, you know, there could have been a language barrier there. And, um, you know, I guess one of the curiosities that I have is, do you think that men and women speak a different language? (laughs) Yes, I do. Communicate in different (laughs) ways. And if so, how? Okay, here's the deal with men and women. We do speak different languages because if you notice, there's, there's studies on this. Women tend to rattle on and go back and forth, banter really quick. And with men... You know, there's a pause and and a little more of a pause in conversation where you kind of exchange the conversation where I stop talking, there's a pause and then they respond. So there's a little more. I mean, it's kind of proven there's a little more back and forth where you actually stop talking and let the other person talk where you notice women will go back and forth like that. that, 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 And, uh, you know, they're bantering kind of it's a thing, but there is a difference in the way men communicate and you know, but men gossip just as much as women and talk behind the scenes. And, you know, that's the part, that part's the same. But I do think there's a little difference in how men listen and how people listen compared to women. Because I know that I can stand in a group of women and a group of men. And I think one of my superpowers is listening. And we'll all leave a meeting where someone else is talking and we all hear different parts. Trust me, because I ask people, did you hear that? And some of them don't even hear what I heard. So, but in overall, do I do think there's a different, a slightly different way they communicate. Yes. Mm. You brought up several principles in terms of like how you manage your team. And uh, you talked about obviously listening. You talked about 
um, circling back to check and see if there was maybe mm -hmm. a miscommunication in the beginning. Um, are mm -hmm. there any other values that you really hold on to strongly in terms of your leadership style? Well, it's all about the respect for the individual person. Just because a person has a third grade or fifth grade education doesn't mean he has to be treated different than anyone else. I can't stand that. I think all people should be treated equally and everybody needs to be understood because, and then you let the other person explain what the challenges are for them and you, and you hear them, you listen. Everybody needs to be heard. So there's no one silver blanket management style. You have to actually look at each person and, and talk to them. And I actually talk to every one of my guys and we have um, open discussions where they're allowed to talk to me and tell me, I mean, there's something's wrong. They come right to me. So they know they can always tell me something. And um, my door is open. And I open door policy big time because stuff goes, stuff happens. And then a sub does something disrespectful and I got to get in there and lay down the law. So they know they can come to me that they're not afraid to tell me everything. So mm -hmm. that helps. That helps. Mm -hmm. In the midst of that dialogue, have you ever had a situation where a male employee has questioned your knowledge just because you happen to be a woman? And how, how mm -hmm. did you navigate that situation? Well, those days are over. But yes, it happened all the time in the beginning. <laughs> yes, uh, the I don't mean to be crude, but the... <laughs> Bob with boobs gets uh, challenged all the time. So, you know, it's um, that happens all the time. Yeah, because in the beginning, they just can't believe this attractive five foot eight female actually knows anything about construction or has any experience. But what people don't know is the secret to my success is I've been standing in the dirt since I was 21 with the biggest contractors in the world. And no one has this experience and no one actually enjoyed it I mean, as much as I do. So, I am unique, but boy, the social norms hit hard in the 80s and 90s. And it's funny because some people are distracted by, uh, you know, my uh, the fact I'm a woman. Yeah, it's funny. <laughs> but now I assume if you're hiring a team member, they're obviously being hired by you. They kind of know what they're um, stepping into in terms of the leadership dynamic now. Well, what happens is, is when I hire someone with skills, um, let's say a carpenter or, a, um, you know, or a sub with super skills, like, you know, the boss, they're not going to challenge me, but they are going to point out what they know and make sure they kind of not brag about it, but make it crystal clear. They do know the, the, what they're doing. So that's the cool part is they, they make sure I know that they know, and then that I'm, maybe they're going to take me to the next level. So that it comes out though all the time. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So you talked about um, not just telling people what to do, but having a sense of conversation and open door policy. A big part of leadership is trust and mm -hmm. even inspiration, like motivating team members to, yeah. you know, perform at their best. How how do you do that? How do you, first of all, cultivate trust? And then secondly, how do you motivate and inspire team members? Well, first of all, you build the trust because you support them. You support your workers first, you, and then you, you make sure they're protected, they're safe, and then the subs aren't getting away with something and disrespecting them. Because when you're on a concrete slab or this, this construction site, the whole rules is respect and knowledge and safety. So you got to get their back. I don't turn my back on them. I don't stab them in the back. I stick with them. It's a family, like a family. It's respect. So we got, so they know I'm there. I've got their back. And then motivating them is encouraging them and, and having the open door policy to not only encourage them, but maybe some guys want to go to the next level and they don't want to dig dirt anymore. They want to become a carpenter. So we train them. And if they, you know, or maybe they want to learn how to do painting. So we train them. So we always offer um, a ways to increase your um, income, or increase your knowledge, uh, build a career out of this because they're staying in this for life. So if they want to learn another trade, we offer that too. Mm -hmm. What uh, what advice would you give other women who maybe they're in construction or maybe um, it's another male dominated? you know, oriented industry, typically, how would you encourage other women who want to build or lead successful teams? What would be your advice to them? Well, first of all, in reality, there are no barriers. Look, I'm a perfect example. There is no barrier. 
Now, if you're on a construction site in the 70s and you're only in the 80s, you know, you're going to get whistled at and hollered. And there was different etiquette because it was tolerated because it really was a man's world in the business. But now it's oh, that part's over. So there's no barriers, only barriers in your mind that you can't do it or you're not going to be liked or you're not going to be accepted. Those barriers actually don't exist because everybody wants knowledge and leadership. And a lot of people aren't leaders. So if you're a good leader, you know, take the classes and learn how to lead if you're not doing it naturally. But you got to be trained to lead professionally. And everybody, if you're a good leader, everybody appreciates it. So don't be scared because the barriers seriously are only in your head. There are no barriers. I'm living example. There are no barriers. You know, they aren't. People like it when you're in charge. They like it when you know what you're doing and help them. Mm hmm. Give us a, a one last question, kind of a, a behind the scenes story from life on the slab, right? Boots in the dirt. Give me something that that uh, illustrates kind of this idea between um, men and women, different communication styles, how you lead the team. Is there something that's happened recently that you go, yeah, you know what? I really would love to take people behind the scenes and have them uh, get a get a glimpse of what life's like. Well, what's like it, it's like as I show up to work every morning and we go over what the rules are. Okay, not what the rules are. Every month we have safety training. So we go over the rules and, and that stuff once a month and make sure they're safe. But every day that's needed, which is most days of the week, we have a tailgate and we talk about what's going on every morning. So the healthy part is that there's an open discussion with the heads of the different departments every morning. And the other workers are usually there listening or waiting for instructions. So the cool part is that it's a daily discussion. So we, we're always one step ahead of what's going to happen tomorrow or next week. So that's what it's like is it's a constant communication and it's a healthy, open discussion. So that's what makes it work is the communication daily. And nothing weird happens but that morning is when we get to talk about problems too so the three p's problems you know the, the three p's um it's it you know you got your what are you going to do to solve your problems you know for the week it's um the the purpose of problems and the uh, the procedures how are you going to get through it you know so there's anybody knows the three p's it's kind of fun but that's what we talk about every day it's fun love it awesome well, thank you for sharing your wisdom, Julie, on uh, this subject and giving people a little bit of a behind the scenes glimpse of how you lead the team at Julie Lawton Design Build. And as you're listening and you want to listen to more episodes, you can check out julielawtonliving.com or you can check out your favorite podcast app and listen to all of our previous episodes. And you can also follow on social media, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn, TikTok. We post uh, daily videos of behind the scenes. So be sure to follow us there. So good to be with you, Julie. Thanks, David. And I'll see you all on the next one for another exciting topic of Julie doing her thing. <laughs>